What is the agricultural advantage? Essentially, we're trying to make the case that agriculture is really important in the whole climate change debate, and it has to move forward. I was on an event at Substar in June, where actually the, when they sent me an invitation to come, it was just an invitation to participate. It was innovation and climate change, and it was all about uh, wind, energy, uh, industry, etc. And there was no agriculture. And so I, you know, I wrote, actually I wrote back to them and said, surely this innovation in agriculture does have to get on the agenda. If there's going to be a transformation in agriculture, it's also taking a gender transformative approach. Only 2.5% of public finance getting through to agriculture. There was lots of interesting discussion about different, how this is moving forward, the NAMAs, there's a climate smart lending platform the eco-business fund, so there's a lot of activity around here, and I think some of the breakthroughs in agricultural transformation are actually going to happen when we do more research in this area and more action in this area than in the more traditional agricultural research. So it's increasing, but at small scales, and lower, this was a particularly focused on low emissions options, but it, it doesn't come with trade-offs. There can be long-term agricultural productivity gains, can be incomes for farmers, and the, some of the many of the low emissions options are also, also building resilience. The policy advantage, there was a, se a section on policy, and there was quite a lot of discussion about science policy interfaces and how to move policy forward. And I think one of the real the, the, the things that came forward was, let's not only think about the policy, but also about the implementation of the policy. So these should almost be science policy operation, <laughs> implementation of policies. The other thing is from the scales in terms of working right from community to global scales along the full spectra, getting the policies right across the scales and also across the sectors. And I think other people this morning made this issue about making sure we work with the different sectors. So for example, the solar irrigation in India, the farmers are uh, electricity into the national grid, those kinds of issues. And the agricultural policy, actually making the transformation in terms of agriculture may be driven by reform system in the, in the uh, insurance sector system, so that the kinds of policies that we must be thinking of is much broader than the, the agricultural policies. The breeding advantage, 60% of bean growing areas could become unsuitable this century because of the two degree warmer climate. We're aiming for only a two degree warmer climate and this is, that's going to be troublesome for some crops and particularly crops like bre uh, beans. So crop breeding is crucial and the point made that actually the gene, the genetic resources, the gene banks of the world are really important to maintain for future breeding efforts. The business advantage, for every $1 of ODA, there's $24 in domestic finance. How do, we, how do we leverage the ODA to drive a transformative agenda? The importance of public-private partnerships and the whole area of blended finance. So some of the priorities that came out, and there's many, and we will, from each of the events, there will be a way we can see some of the priorities, but just some of the, the a few of them taking this gender transformative approach, the strong farmer organizations, lots of, in many sense of digital agriculture, the, the working across the sectors, the banking sector, the agricultural sector, the energy sector, the technologies, uh, increased investment in climate actions, the business case for long-term adaptation, so how do we, it's pretty boring perhaps, to keep gene banks, and how do we finance gene backs? How do we keep the genetic resources around? And I think this one was really made yesterday, the importance of the private sector in driving transformative approaches. So that there was a, um, a decision on agriculture. And if anybody's been, I've been following the negotiations since 2009, and it's a very boring process. And six years they've been discussing in Substa, and this is what they got to yesterday. So. You know, it's a fantastic outcome that finally in the official forums there's going to be discussions. But I would also say that 
what's happening in the bond zone is, is fantastic in terms of agriculture. So we must really continue the discussions outside the forum as well. <laughs> and just to say, this is uh, we're working with the UNFCCC, and um, this is the kind of thing that's happening in the outside. Working with the national adaptation uh, uh, planning process, the kinds of options available. Working GCF, agriculture's on the agenda. So the things are happening outside the negotiations, and I think if we want to push the negotiators, we must do more work outside and really keep agriculture on the agenda.